So what I've got for us today is a pretty typical layout you might see on any website. Now I've purposely not gone and done too much styling to this because I wanna show you a few tips and tricks on ways you can go ahead and set this up to be a little bit more automatically responsive so you're not stuck going in here into the tablet settings and the mobile settings to reset up things like padding or text sizes or even card layouts at each and every single breakpoint. The nice thing about what I'm gonna show you in today's video is it's not gonna take a whole lot of extra work. In fact, it's gonna cut down on your workload from jumping back and forth between tablet and mobile breakpoints for every single one of your elements. All you need to do is simply tweak some of the things about how you're laying these things out and it's gonna be more automatically responsive. Now, before we dive in, just a quick word from today's video sponsor. Pi Calendar is the most flexible and most lightweight calendar plugin available for WordPress. In just five minutes or less, you can turn any post on your website into an event that will appear on a front end calendar. Our obsessive approach to stability and performance means that you can trust Pi Calendar to do exactly what it's supposed to do without updates that will end up breaking your entire site. But no bloat doesn't mean limited features because Pi Calendar comes packed with tons of amazing features like recurring events, add to calendar links, adaptive time zones, ACF support, e-commerce integrations, and so much more. We also are currently offering a lifetime deal, which you can grab by visiting our website at piecalendar.com. I think where we should dive in first is the padding on this section. If we go ahead and pop open the list view here, you can see I have a section with a wrapper inside of it. That wrapper is just containing all of our content to our site's content max width. And then inside of that, we have all the content of this page, including our headline, our intro, and our grid of cards here. But if I go take a look at it on the front end and refresh here, I'm just gonna open it up in the inspector. And you can see right now here on desktop on the left and right, it looks fine. Of course, we need some padding on the top and bottom as it's pretty crammed there. But as we start to shrink this in, you're gonna see that all of our content is hitting the edge of our viewport here, which doesn't look great. So I know we need to add some padding to this section. Now, typically you might just go to this section, go into the spacing settings and set some padding here. Maybe we do something like, 80 pixels on the top, 40 pixels on the right, 80 on the bottom, and 40 on the left. Now if we save that and go take a look at the front end again, now we have some nice spacing on the top and bottom, and as we scrunch this in, we can see it's never hitting the edge of our viewport. Of course, as we get down to mobile sizes here, maybe in the 300 or 400 range, you can see that that 40 pixels of padding is pretty big. And even though we only went with 80, which is fairly small for section padding, it does look quite a bit bigger here on mobile than it did on desktop. And this just has to do with the proportions of our page. So we could go back in here and go to each one of our breakpoints and maybe we bring this down to 60 and 24 and we do 60 and 24 here. And now if we save this, refresh on the front end, we can see as we get down to that tablet breakpoint, everything gets just a little bit tighter. Of course, we'd have to go do that at our mobile breakpoint as well. So maybe we do something like 48 on the top and bottom and 16 on the left and right. And now with those settings, if we save it, and refresh on the front end, we can see everything looks a whole lot better, but we did have to go and set all of these up at each individual breakpoint, which is a lot of extra work that we don't necessarily need to do. So let me show you how you can do this with just one set of values on your desktop version that's gonna automatically respond very similar to how this did without having to go into all of your responsive breakpoints. I've gone ahead and cleared out all those padding values we gave on the desktop, tablet, and mobile versions here so we can start back fresh. And what I'm gonna open up for us is a clamp calculator. I'll make sure that this is linked down in the video description below. And what clamp is gonna allow us to do is use a function that will set a maximum value and a minimum value, and then it will automatically respond between those. So if we look at this clamp calculator form here, the first thing we need to do is set a minimum size. And the minimum size for that left and right padding, which we'll start with first, was just 16 pixels on the left and right, which we can set here as pixels. Now for the maximum size, we wanted that to go all the way up to 40, so I'm gonna change that to 40 pixels. And now we are setting this form up in pixels, but it's actually gonna result in rim values, which is great and more accessible. Now we can also set the minimum viewport and the maximum viewport. This just has to do with where the size is going to get to its max value and its minimum value. I'm gonna go ahead and set our minimum value to 420 pixels, which is a pretty typical phone size. And then I'm gonna set that maximum value to 1280 pixels, which is just my content width size. You can set these to be whatever you want, but I find that these values work pretty well for me. Once we have that set up, we can leave this root font size and viewport units the same, and then we'll just go ahead and hit calculate. 
Now here's where we have our result and I'll go ahead and copy this to my clipboard. And we'll jump back into the editor here. Now I still have this section highlighted. So in my padding here on the desktop version, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in that clamp value that I got on my left and right padding. Let's go ahead and save those changes and we'll refresh on the front end to see how things look. Now here at desktop where we have plenty of size, it really doesn't matter that padding isn't being used. But as we get down here to a tighter viewport, you can see we have our nice 40 pixels of padding on the left and right. But as we get this down even smaller, we can see that we don't still have 40 pixels on the left and right. We've actually got down to that 16 pixels that we liked on our mobile version. In fact, if I just open up these tools here, you can see that our padding left right now is set to 16 as well as our padding right. But as I bring this up to a wider width, we can see that our padding's gone all the way up to 40 on both the left and right. If you just watch those values, you can see they automatically change as we widen and shrink this viewport. By using those clamp values, we can just set one set of definitions for our left and right padding here, and it's gonna automatically take care of how that needs to get a little bit tighter as we get into our mobile devices. This is all just being inherited to our tablet and mobile, so we don't have to go set anything up inside there. And we can use the same strategy to do the padding on the top and bottom. We'll just go back into our clamp calculator and we'll do some more extreme values here just so you can really see it in action. We'll say our minimum size for the padding is maybe 40 pixels and we'll go up to like 160 on desktop. Now, since I already set that minimum viewport and maximum viewport, I don't have to change that. So we'll go ahead and hit calculate. And again, I'm just gonna copy that value to my clipboard. We'll go back into the editor here and for the top and bottom padding, I'll go ahead and paste in those new clamp values. Again, we'll go ahead and save those changes, refresh on the front end, and we can see we have a nice big padding here on the top and bottom. But as we scrunch this in and get to smaller viewport sizes, you can actually see that this text is moving up as our padding gets smaller and smaller and something that's a little bit more appropriate for mobile. Now these are pretty extreme values. You might not wanna go all the way from 160 to 40 as this goes down to mobile, but you probably do wanna tighten that up a little bit so you don't have so much blank space when you're dealing with a really small device. Now, another really common use case for clamp values is when you're dealing with typography, specifically your font sizes. You can see here, this is just bringing in my theme defaults, but we're gonna use clamp to change the size of this text, depending on whether or not we're on a desktop device or a mobile device. Now, typically you're gonna to wanna to set this up in your customizer so it affects all of the headings on your website, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna do it here individually on this block. Now here we haven't set any size on our heading, so I'm just gonna go ahead and change this to four rim, which gives us a nice big headline for this section. When we go down to tablet, it looks a little bit big, but when we get down to mobile, it's just way too big. So of course we'd have to go down here and say maybe 2.5 rim on mobile and maybe three rim on tablet. But just like our padding, there's no reason that we have to go set this at all of our different breakpoints if we use a clamp calculation. So I'll go ahead and just delete all these values that I set up manually, and we'll go back into our clamp calculator. So here for our minimum size, we wanted that 2.5 rim, which is 40 pixels. And here for our maximum size, we wanted four rim, which is equal to 64 pixels. Now again, we can just leave those minimum and maximum viewports just as we did before, and we'll go ahead and hit calculate so we can get our new clamp function down here. Again, I'll just copy this to my clipboard. We'll go back into the editor here, select our headline, and in the font size, I'm just gonna paste in that clamp value. So now you can see we have our nice big headline here on desktop. As we go to tablet, it gets slightly smaller. And as we get to mobile, it goes down to the value we set, which was 2.5 rim. This is a little bit easier to see if you go into your responsive mode here. We can see that our heading is nice and big here on desktop, but as we get to a smaller breakpoint, that heading is getting quite a bit smaller. Again, we can go ahead and select this element and we can take a look at the font size. Here you can see it's 40 pixels, but if we go ahead and bring this up, now we can see that font size is 64 pixels. This just makes it a whole lot easier to set up your typography once and not have to deal with all the different breakpoints. Now, no matter what size somebody's device is, this typography is always gonna look nice and proportional. The next thing I wanna tackle in this layout is our intro text, which is just this paragraph beneath our headline. 
Now, typically you don't want any text that stretches the entire width of your website here. Even though this is constrained to my content width, which is about 1280 pixels, it's still just too wide to read comfortably. Anytime the user's having to turn their neck back and forth to read your text, they're probably just gonna skip over it. So we wanna constrain this text to a much more narrow width. Now, what you might be tempted to do is go in here to the sizing, and maybe you set a max width of something like 50%, which will just make sure that this text never goes past 50% of its container. But as we go down to tablet here, that's starting to look a little too gramped. And of course, when we go to mobile, now this text just looks silly. So instead of using a percent here or a specific pixel value, you can use the CH unit to your advantage. So what I'm gonna do here is do something maybe like 60 CH, which is just gonna constrain this to 60 character units wide. What's nice about this is it's not using a percentage of our container, it's actually basing the width on the size of our text. What that means is when we go to tablet, it's still being able to take up 60 CH units, which is almost the entire width of our container here. But when we get down to mobile, it's able to fill up the entire space because we said just don't be any more than 60 CH units wide, but it can still fill up its entire space here. Using the CH unit on text like this not only makes it easier to be automatically responsive, but it's a great way of making all the text on your website quite a bit more readable. Anywhere between 50 and 75 CH units is always pretty comfortable to read. Now, as we've been widening and shrinking this viewport, it's probably been driving you crazy how bad our cards look here, especially on mobile. Three columns just isn't gonna work. Now, all I did to set up this grid was just go into my card wrapper here, and I set this up as a display grid. And for the grid layout, I just use one of the presets that Generate Blocks gives us here, which is repeat three, min max, zero, one FR. This is just a nice responsive way to give us three columns. Of course, when we go to tablet, now this feels a little cramped, so we'd be tempted to turn this to two columns. And as we go to mobile, we'd wanna go ahead and change that to one column. This looks a whole lot better, but it required us to go into each one of the individual breakpoints and set the amount of columns. But there's actually an even more responsive way we can fill in our grid template columns to make this automatically responsive. So let's go ahead and clear out all those grid template columns we had set up so we can just start from the beginning again. And just like before, since everything on our tablet and mobile is gonna inherit from our desktop, we can just write this here inside of our desktop breakpoint. Now there's not an option for you to just grab a preset for this, but this is something you might copy to your clipboard or create some kind of little class for so you don't have to type it out every time. What I'm gonna do is type the word repeat and then open and close my parentheses. Now inside of this repeat, instead of saying how many columns we need here, what we're gonna type in is the word auto fit with a hyphen in between auto and fit. We'll do a comma and then we're gonna do min max, which is our min max function. And again, we'll need to open and close parentheses here. Now inside of those parentheses for our min max function, we can set a minimum value, which is the smallest we ever want our columns to be. And then a maximum value, which is the biggest we ever want our columns to be. So a good starting place for a three column layout like this is maybe something like 300 pixels, comma one FR. Now what this is gonna do is make sure that each column inside of our grid is never smaller than 300 pixels and never bigger than one fractional unit. Let me show you how that actually works out on the front end of this website. We'll just go ahead and refresh this again. And as a reminder, I didn't set anything at tablet or mobile, but you can see as I scrunch this in, it automatically went to two columns. Now it did this because our columns got less than 300 pixels wide. You can see here at the top of that call out that this column is 304 pixels wide right now, but if I shrink this in, it got below that 300 unit, so now it needed to stack onto another row. This is gonna go ahead and be automatically responsive as we get all the way down to our mobile sizes without us having to set a specific number of columns on our different breakpoints. This auto fit function works really well when you're not as concerned about the number of columns, you just wanna make sure the content within it always looks good and setting these to a minimum of 300 pixels works really well inside of this layout. I'll make sure to put that function down inside the video description so you can just copy and paste it. And really the only thing you'll need to play around with is that pixel value here where you're setting the minimum size of course, if we change this to 400, it's only gonna give us two inside this breakpoint. And if we change it down to 100, it's gonna be able to fit a lot more. But the nice thing about this auto fit is that when it has more space, it will go ahead and let those containers grow. So they fill up the entire container width, but they're never gonna get smaller than this minimum value. 
Now, the last thing I wanna take care of in this layout are these images, which are all different proportions right now. I've gone ahead and given all these images a class, that way we can just set the styling on one and all the other images will inherit it. And if we go ahead and go into that class right now, we can see by default, the width and height were both set to auto with a max width of 100%. These are just the defaults that Generate Blocks gives us. But let's say we wanna give all these images the exact same height. Now, typically you might go in here and type something in like 200 pixels. That will make all of these images 200 pixels tall. And of course we wanna make them span the full width. So we could go into the width here and change that to 100%. So now we have images that look nice here on desktop, but as we go to tablet, we can see the proportions of those images change slightly. This is even more noticeable when you go to mobile here. In fact, if you look at this mountainside, you can see here in the mobile version, if we go back to our desktop version, we're just barely seeing a corner of that. And that's because this 200 pixel height is being set statically, but our width is dynamic. It's just 100% of that column width, which is changing depending on the device size. So instead of setting a explicit height on this, we can just change this height to auto and instead use aspect ratio. This is just gonna make sure that the aspect ratio of our image is the same no matter what. Maybe we pick something like 16 over nine, which we just type in here as 16 slash nine. And now whenever we go to our tablet version and our mobile version, you can see the proportions of these images are staying the same no matter what. It's 100% the width, and then it's just forcing that aspect ratio of 16 by nine. And just like that, we've built out this entire section without using a single media query. By using all these more advanced techniques, we were able to make everything completely responsive without having to dive into tablet or mobile settings for anything. Now, that doesn't mean you're never gonna use media queries. They still come in handy, and so do their cousin container queries, which I'll put a video at the end of this one showing you exactly how container queries work. However, if you use some of these techniques we talked about in today's video, you're gonna have to spend less time fiddling with all these different breakpoints and make things more responsive straight out of the box. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you then.